On today's episode, we wade into controversy. How many corners does Pocono Raceway actually have? Plus, should Chicago return in 2025? Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. Yes, tonight on Unsolved Mysteries, we are wading into the waters of controversy. How many corners does Pocono Raceway actually have? Now, the track will tell you that they have three very distinct different corners. Turn one, modeled after Trenton. Turn two, modeled after Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And turn three, modeled after the Milwaukee Mile. But I'm here to tell you that I think there might be more than three corners hiding out there. Now, the racetrack famously runs a marketing scheme on the race weekend down in what should be maybe turn four, depending on how you count, that says what turn four. Hilarious, funny marketing. It looks like they put it up with duct tape. I get it. It's cute. But there's a bigger issue at hand here. I think they're lying to us. Now, Pocono, of course, is the tricky triangle. It's in the honeymoon capital of the world, which feels debatable at this time. How many people do you know have actually ever honeymooned in Pocono? I know zero. I have never honeymooned in Pocono. I've never honeymooned anywhere, but it wouldn't probably be the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania. It, of course, falls in line with other famous triangles, the Bermuda Triangle, uh, Jay-Z's Rock Nation Triangle. You have Phil Jackson's Triangle Defense. I mean, heck, even the Pythagorean Theorem can help you figure out that this is, in fact, a triangle. But if you go off of how NASCAR actually goes out there and numbers different corners, I'm here to tell you there's definitely more than three. So we'll start off with turn one, modeled after Trenton, according to the racetrack. So typically how NASCAR measures corners or numbers corners is they break it in half. So you enter in turn one, you exit in turn two. Well, I'm here to tell you that that is turn one and turn two down there. All right, we've already used up two of our three corners for what Pocono actually says it has, which is three corners. Heading down the straightaway to the tunnel turn, which is modeled after Indianapolis. That is turn three. So now we've used up all three turns. We're still not back to the start finish line yet, boys and girls. So now we get down to the corner that is modeled after the Milwaukee Mile, which Pocono says is turn three. I'm here to tell you that that is turn four and turn five, which will put you out onto the straightaway and send you back down to the start finish line, meaning that there are five different corners at Pocono Raceway. And, and all, honestly, their marketing should now be about five different corners or the fact that where is turn six? We've lost it. We haven't been able to find it because there are far more than just three corners at Pocono Raceway. It's a controversy nobody wants to talk about. It's like the Bernstein Bears. We all know it's Bernstein Bears, but we all thought it was the Bernstein bears and we all know that there's more than three corners here but everybody just accepts the fact that it's three corners and we're like i don't know man they're on a roll just let them go with it like it's animal house and the germans have bombed pearl harbor you just sometimes roll with something just to let it go so you don't have to disrupt things but i am here to tell you i went to math class miss simmons taught me how to count and i can count five different corners on that racetrack so i'm interested to hear what everybody else has to say about this because i'm convinced that there are definitely more than three corners at the pocono raceway moving on to another racetrack that i'm sure won't be as controversial. Yes, it will. It absolutely will be because it's in the city of Chicago, which is just controversial in itself. Now, I was there this past weekend for the Chicago street race, and it was phenomenal. This is a race that should absolutely be on the calendar for years to come. This should be NASCAR's version of Long Beach. As long as the city of Chicago will have NASCAR, NASCAR should return to Grant Park every single year. That's how much I liked this event. That's how much I like Chicago. And I apologize for everything that I said in that video, blasting that guy that lived in the suburbs. I take back most of what I said about it. Other than your sports teams, those are still trash. I grew up in Cincinnati. The Cubs will always be trash. To me, the White Sox, they're non-existent. Uh, so apologies if you're a fan. The Bears, they're not competitive. Nobody's worried about them uh, it, right now. The Blackhawks, they exist. They're going to be good again. Connor Bedard, uh, phenomenal generational talent. And then the Bulls, they play basketball, but do they actually play basketball at this point? So I take back everything bad I said about your city. I enjoyed a Chicago dog. I enjoyed the hell out of a Chicago dog four different times. Phenomenal. Um, but the race, fantastic. I liked every bit of it. Now, I understand it is a high barrier of entry. We're talking between four and $600 for a grandstand seat, $150 for general admission. I get it. That is a big barrier of entry for a lot of people. And it certainly weeds out a decent amount of NASCAR fans that would be able to go to this event. But being able to stay literally right across the street from the racetrack, walk out the front door and then into the racetrack, that is top notch. That is top level. You're not getting that in Newton, Iowa. You're not getting that in Bristol, Tennessee. You're not getting that literally pretty much anywhere else in the country where NASCAR goes other than maybe like Daytona. You can maybe do that at select hotels, but it's still a decent bit of a walk uh, to get there. It was really fun. 
the convenience of everything, the ease of access to everything. I like this event so much. And it's unfortunate that for the second year in a row, the NASCAR Cup Series race was shortened by rain and by darkness. 58 laps on Sunday out of the scheduled 75. Not exactly ideal, but still a really fun and interesting race up to that point. Now, I have seen things that the Chicago Sun-Times has written. I've seen things that their council members have said as well. And one council member continues to complain about the fact that the you know the nascar build out of the of the street course takes away you know residents access to majority of grant park for what three ish weeks in the summertime i get it a chicago summer is already short now you're not giving people access to this park i under i 100 understand this the the park could use some edging the parks department i'm not telling you how to do your jobs i'm just saying if you own an edger Edging some of the sidewalks would actually go a really long way to making that park look even more beautiful than it already did. That's just my personal preference, pet peeve of mine. Moving on to, to the actual event, it was all very, very well done, very well put together. But we also had the same council member being like, we owe it to NASCAR to give them another chance next year to let them come back and prove what they can do when the weather doesn't affect the race. And it felt like that was going to be this year until four o'clock came along and it absolutely poured and really disrupted the entire day which was highly unfortunate because on Saturday for the Xfinity Series race, Chamber of Commerce style of day uh, on the streets of Chicago, 100% one of the best events I've ever attended, especially for an Xfinity Series race. Really energetic crowd, electric pit road feel to it. It felt like a big time event, and that's what this needs to be on the calendar, a big time event for the series. So hopefully they do return in 2025. Of course, NASCAR and Chicago do have a contract for 2025, as well as options beyond that, I believe. Both of them have to give the other 180 days if they want to opt out of the contract, which could happen for 2025. The city said that they will have an announcement or a decision rather on the future of this race, specifically for 2025 in the coming weeks. So we'll have to wait on that. But they definitely seem very energized by it. The mayor was pumped up about it. Uh, last year in 2023, the economic impact was about $100 million that was brought to the city by this event. I would argue that it's probably going to be more in 2024 just because it was so nice on Friday and Saturday there were a ton of people out going to restaurants going to shops everything this and that it was a great time now the Chicago Sun Times of course there's a bunch of naysayers out there a bunch of negative Nancy's that's the world we live in right everybody's got to be negative nobody ever wants to be positive I don't really care what the Chicago Sun Times has to say they said that it was a sparsely attended event around 80,000 people there well Okay, NASCAR probably wanted around 100,000 people there. Again, like we talked about, high barrier of entry. Um, it's different. I passed a couple of people on the sidewalk on Friday night, and they, they were explaining to these this other couple was explaining to this group of people that this was a NASCAR race. And they were like, oh, we didn't even know NASCAR did races like this. So there's still some marketing to do, still some awareness driving uh, that needs to be done. So they can definitely get more fans in there. But 80,000 fans is still a really healthy number for a NASCAR Cup Series race. I mean, when we get to the championship finale at Phoenix, that'll be a sold out crowd of 50,000 people. And everybody's going to talk about how great the grandstand looks, how this is sold out once again, this and that, and they'll praise it. And then they'll turn around and be like, there's not enough people in Chicago at this event. Well, there's 30,000 more people at the street race than there will be at the championship race. So this is definitely a success. The Sun-Times also went on to talk about how the uh, concerts, they weren't attended very well either. And it lacked that, lacked that Lollapalooza feel to it. Well, that's because that's an actual concert. Like that's an actual festival that does happen. This is a race with some, you know, music acts you know brought into it and you have the black keys and chain smokers on saturday for me the black keys was really fun right i grew up on the black keys that it was cool to see them play in concert i never seen them play live before so walked right out of victory lane with shane van gisbergen went over the pedestrian bridge into a black keys concert that was pretty cool chain smokers not really my scene it was cool but i'm not going to stick around for the entire thing uh, for that move on to Sunday, you have somebody named Lauren Elena. I'm sure she's a lovely person. Zero idea who she is. And then that led into Keith Urban. Keith Urban, big time act, probably should be after the race though. Having it before the race just gave off a kind of a weird undercard feel to it. And that guy has bangers on bangers. I actually forgot how many good songs he has. I saw people in the story being like, well, you know, Keith Urban's not really a Chicago act. It's country music and that's not what Chicago does. Well, listen, if Luke Combs is playing at Soldier Field, Soldier Field sold out. 
it's con country goes everywhere. You can say that you're not a country town. I believe you, but at the same time, you'll absolutely sell out Soldier Field if he's over there. And again, you had to buy a $150 general mission pass just to get in to see the concerts, but at least you got the race out of it. So it's this balancing act, right? And to the fan that also said that a way to get people to come to concerts that have Smashing Pumpkins in 2025, banana land that that guy's living in. At this point, I'm pretty sure Smashing Pumpkins are playing like municipal concerts on the 4th of July around the country. They're not playing big time music festivals or at, you know, a gigantic NASCAR race. They're just not. So I get the Chicago connection never going to happen. So let me know in the comments. What do you think about Pocono Raceway and how many corners it has? Should the Chicago Street Race return in 2025? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.